Hi, John here. Uh, today is Wednesday, the 4th of um, January 2017. I'm just doing a bit of work on um, Clendon, Captain James Reedy Clendon, and putting the rough documents together for Waitangi for the Whakaminia uh, Native Chiefs. I'm just ringing uh, Bundy Waitai. Just a moment. Let's go. Let's see if we can get him. My name is Bundy Waitai Kiora. Bundy. If you can hear me. Then hang up and press the hashtag. Bundy, uh, John Wano here. Um, Happy New Year. Uh, give me a call when you've got a bit of time. I just want to run something over with you and see how we're going. I'm just working on the uh, Clendon title at the moment and that's looking uh, right. I'll, I'll explain that when you ring me up. Okay? I'm just putting all the documents together. Right, bye. That's him. Okay? That's him. I'll try and ring... I'll ring... Um, See if I can get him. Hi, Manahi, it's John Wanoa here. I always miss you. Um, trying to get to talk to you just to fill you in where we are. I'm just putting the Clendon uh, titles together for Kora Reka for our um, meeting up there. <coughs> I didn't get the uh, uh, hall, the uh, Paihia War Memorial Hall, so uh, we'll just take it by here on the 4th Titi Marae will be open. We can make our hui there between 4th and the 5th. But I have my big tent outside as well, uh, outside the treaty ground. Um, I mean the Titi grounds where the ship is. So I'm going to try and get there. I'll get there on the 3rd. So I can set up and make sure I'm all set up, okay? That's all. Bye. Uh, these fellas are phone shy. I don't know why I can't get anyone. When I run a business, it's going to be you're on the end of the phone, just like Trump. He's, he says you're there or you're fired. And if the phone doesn't go, there's no business. You see, you lose every chance. With a deal going on, you'll miss. If you're not on the phone to answer it, you'll miss. So that's all I wanted to say there. I'll, I'll give, um, I'll make Ruka Ruka Ping a call. And I just want to catch up with him as well. I'll just make sure I've got his number. That's the one. That's the one. Yeah, uh, Jim, it's John Wanoa here. Give me a call when you get a chance. I'm just going through the Clendon uh, titles at the moment. The, um, Captain James Clendon. It looks clearer now that he drafted everything on his paper before the tr which, uh, Treaty of Waitangi was signed. It was all done on his paper. That means he already had the title before it went there. Okay? That's what I'm trying to establish with the British title, with the Navy. That's what they bought the land on the 20th, or on, on the 10th they got there of, of uh, March 1834, and on the 20th they formed the legal papers. Okay? That, that's what I'm separate that from. I've got to get this one right um, on Waitangi Day. There's no getting out of it. It's one or the other. Okay? Bye. You see, I'm doing titles. And I'm very thorough when it comes to titles. I've been going over this 
for a little while now. I'm focusing on this, uh, having this meeting in the Waitangi Marae Treaty House with uh, the Governor and the Navy, the New Zealand Navy, and the residents of Russell uh, that are there now. Those people, I'll pick out one of them to be there to speak on their side of those British immigrants that got their titles through this Captain James Reedy Clendon on his um, uh, documents uh, at that particular time, 1830, was when he bought the first piece of land as being a British um, title. Okay, so um, uh, it was done. The documents, um, the, the sale and purchase agreement documents uh, were done on Tucker paper, W. Tucker paper in 1833. The stock pa paper, the, the, um, the watermark paper, was used for the Treaty of Waitangi on this W. Tucker printing paper with the watermark in it. So that was official government stock paper. And so he had drafted the um, documents with Busby, James Busby, well before, that was in the time from 1830 when he bought the first piece of land from Pomari, and that would have had to have the sale and purchase agreement from Britain. Okay, it had to have the sale and purchase from Britain. So he became the um, consular for America. You see it's going back through America and the document before the treaty was signed had that authority to America on it. So the Queen was operating from America with the Rothschilds at that time. You see what I mean? It's not the um, document of the New Zealand government. The actual paper itself is not a copyright of the government here or Australia. It's a British watermark um, proper uh, paper <coughs> printing. And so W. Tucker is the key of a legal instrument document of a British title when Captain Clendon arrived in Okiato is where he bought the 220 acres of land from Pomari, the chief. You see, it's immaterial. What else matters? All that matters is that piece of paper that he had formulated all the legal documents for a title transfer. And if it's got Australian title transfer on any documents at the time, it was scrubbed out. It was scrubbed out uh, of a British title. And so, before the Treaty of Waitangi was signed, that's a New South Wales title when they drafted or gazetted a document that was already put together in 1834. And as far back as 1833, on this purchase of land, he purchased Clendon, James Reddy Clendon, purchased his first piece of land from Pomare in 1830, you see, 1830, and he was a proficient businessman and took up the legal side of documents when he became a mercantile or a trading man that knew shipping and admiralty law um, as sealer. He had a big business. He was very wealthy at the time, and so he constructed the legal documents that were altered when it went into the Treaty of Waitangi from 1835, Declaration of Independence of uh, James Busby, put his documents together on Littlewood paper. You see, the Littlewood Treaty is James Busby's own paper written documents. That's not the Clendon written documents that survived to go into the US American consulate as ambassador. That one mattered because the Queen owned America commercially under King William the Fourth. 
actually. Um, uh, no, sorry, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm getting that one wrong. Later, then after 1837, when King William died, that's when the treaty took off into the Rothschild side, when Captain Clendon had drafted the British side on that um, watermark paper, the W. Tucker watermark paper. I'm putting these documents together now for the record on this video today and draft up for the meeting with Bill English, Prime Minister of New Zealand. And the debt is on John Key, the banker um, that worked for Merrill Lynch Bank and he's liable. I've libeled him. I've put the levy debtor instrument, the one billion trillion pound note on him as liable in this Clendon title jurisdiction of Admiralty. Okay, so this document of land transfer for all the lands in New Zealand came from that. That's my authority that I'm placing on the 1834 Whakaputanga flag before it became an 1835 altered document. Altered document. Littlewood Treaty, Busby, 1835, Confederation of Chiefs, Declaration of Independence flag. That's that one. That paper. This paper I'm talking about, the real paper, is the W. Tucker, 1833 document that Clendon, Captain, Captain James Reedy Clendon, see, HM Navy Fortitude, that's his ship, he's a surrogate King William IV, like myself, surrogate King, I'm talking for King William right there the same way as he was talking for King William as a captain of a ship doing the legal documents, I'm doing the legal documents here. Um, the same way as what, what he's doing. I'm drafting up papers. All the papers and documents you see that I write, mistakes and everything, the videos, the statements, affidavits, everything is legal on the 15th of April 2016, last year. We passed those acts we had on the 4th, 5th and 6th, the 3rd, the 4th, 5th and 6th of February 2016. We passed all those acts inside the Waitangi Marae King's Bench Native Court on that day and also legalised the flag under this Clendon Captain Clendon Admiralty Ship Surrogate King's legal authority okay he became the Consulate General of the United States in 1839 I think it is um, and ambassador. So that meant that all the commerce was going through America and not straight to Britain from New Zealand. Okay? It was all going straight to America that's owned by King William IV, jurisdiction of Admiralty. Everything under jurisdiction of Admiralty kicked off from Clendon on that time period. 1830, remember? He's under King William, uh, King William IV, reign of monarch sovereign, 1830 to 1837. So he was right there, here, on those lands at Kororareka, on 1830. 1830, he arrived from Britain. He arrived and he bought land. He bought 220 acres of land at Okiato. Ok in the Bay of Islands, Russell, 12th of October, 1838, that's when he lived next door to um, James Busby. 1830, Captain Clendon bought 220 acres of land at Okiato, four miles upstream from Kororareka. There you go, that's the proof that he was a surrogate King William IV at 1830. So he had the legal right as a captain on ship to raise the flag of the 1834 that was chosen. He chose that as the flag of New Zealand right then. 
okay? That's what I'm defining here as the title to this country and to the whole world under this 1834 Whakaputanga flag of the Whakameninga Hapu chiefs. And today, Chief Kingi Taurua is the chief of the tribes of Ngāpui that signed the treaty as the oldest on his feet. On Waitangi Marae and Titi Marae, he's the oldest <coughs> man standing as the last man on his feet as the mana of those two marais. His name is on the documents I've got. It sticks. We passed it into law. King, you're watching this video. We passed that into law on the 15th of April 2016 and you were there. All you had to do was stand there. I was there to say to you, we've been for it. You know what this meeting was for. We had um, uh, the police constable from from um, up north of it, Kerry Kerry, um, Paul Tipene, he was there, and Mori Rapana, the cultural manager of the Watangi National Trust. He was there as well, as well as two others that were there at the same time, uh, Willie Pato and, and um, um, Hohepa Epila. They were there too, but you, I'm just saying their surnames, Ipping, that's what Hoyhepa's real name is, under his male line, only go male line on Moai, crown, titles are male only, the same as King William IV is. Salic law forbids women from succeeding to the throne or male line. Okay, Those two are male line. You won't see a female statue on Easter Island. It's male line to God. Okay? L O R E. King William IV is L A W. Okay? Moai is L O R E. Straight spirit law to God. Truth, nothing but truth, so help me God. My word against your word is what I'm just saying here with this title to this country. Is the Clinton title on a transfer of land, the first transfer of land under British Admiralty of Captain then Freddie Clinton as surrogate King William IV that that was the fashion of going to other countries with the Navy to claim the land belongs to the King of England and so we're saying at Dohui up there at Waitangi the land belongs to the native chiefs and not the King or the Queen of England there's no King or Queen of England after the Queen goes it's the, either the King of Britain or the King of Europe, okay, Westminster Parliament or European Union, one or the other in these days. And Prince William, you can forget about being a king because you're down the wrong bloodline, you're Spanish, and that trust, the Queen Victoria Trust belongs to us, it doesn't belong to you or the Spanish or the Philippines. That trust we're seizing back with this title, this Navy title, you're watching me? What's my words? What I'm saying is the Clendon title from 1830, Captain James Reddy Clendon bought 220 acres of land at Okiato in Kororareka, four miles up the stream from Kororareka or Russell, as it is called, Russell, Bay of Islands, Northland, New Zealand. Okay, so that's what I'm saying from that time on, 1833, 1830 to 1833, he bought more land. In 1836, Clendon bought the Okiato estate, purchased from Paul Mare, some more land. Okay, bought some more land. So that just shows you, he couldn't buy land without transaction. He couldn't buy land without a title. He couldn't buy land without someone to buy it off. These titles were pre-sold from Britain with Te Rawaikato Whareherehu, Manaka, T 
chief of Waitang and at the same time Ongi Hika was in Cambridge in England with Te Rewaikato Wharahere. Okay, so I want to tell you that was already in play at 1830. They went to Cambridge in England to learn all the real estate. Well, that was Te Rewaikato learned real estate and then transactions and banking. When he came back, <coughs> that's when the government shifted from Kororareka down to Kohimaruma in Auckland and they started using the Manukau land company titles. You see, same British titles with the Scottish company, the Manukau land company, real estate. Sold the first lands in Auckland and seized all these other ones. Here, I'm talking about the Clendon ones. Seized them all. Seized the whole lot and put new titles right through New Zealand with those ones. Those are the titles I'm holding in my bag. And all you people up there listening to this video in Napoli, you haven't been listening too well because I'm in the real estate field and mortgage broking, banking, broking, um, uh, sale and purchase agreements, side of my profession in those days, land transactions and native lands and Mohi Manukau's titles and Hare Utatonga's titles of those land blocks in Te Kimurai. I've got the original titles here to that and Auckland and Gisborne, East Coast and the whole country. I've written it all up on documents that are sworn inside Waitangi Marae King's Bench Native Court. I'm bringing all those back up again in my bag. I didn't have to show anybody because it's private. Admiralty law is private contract. Private contract. So now, Bill English, you and your parliament and your cabinet and your crown agents, companies in New Zealand, are all default contract levy debtor. Crown agents. Okay, so you get in the bill and you get a bill of a trillion pounds on each one's head after that with the Cook Street property. We're going to seize. We're going to seize as the land commissioner the Native Land Commissioner here on these lands and the Pacific Islands under the Moai Crown, King William IV Admiralty Jurisdiction, our flag and this Clendon title. Okay, I don't have to show you anything. I don't have to show you, I will show you some parts of the titles that I have in big books I've put together myself. I've put them together with Mohi Manako and the Confederation of Chiefs at that time, at the meeting I went to. That's something you haven't got. Kohepa, you didn't go to any of those confederation meetings about the flag. I've got it all. Okay? I went through all the trouble, parked my business up to do that. I had a, a, I had a, a successful business going in garage mechanics and also in property development, high-rise concreting and all that sort of thing. But I parked it up to go and chase the titles because I had a bigger project coming along the Moai Tidal Turbine Energy Plan and now that one's ready to go. And on top of that we've got the seabed titles locked into this contract with this Admiralty contract. Now the Pope got rid of all your laws from the Vatican's laws and I won my case against the CIB police on Cook Street. That means you're out of my road now, legally. I use this title on you and a trillion pounds on anybody who steps in the road of me, Kiwi Tauru, and the native court jury. Every court case is a jury case in a Moai, King William, King William IV, King's Bench Court, anywhere in the world. Okay, just to let you know that this went to America. Captain James Reddy Clendon was the um, ambassador for America. At that time, King William IV set up the stock exchange in New York when he was in the Navy, 50 years in the Navy. Before he became king in 1830, he was running the stock exchange in New York City. 
<coughs> and our Maui statue is standing there and standing in Washington, D.C. as well. And it's the mana whenua, not tangata whenua, mana whenua. I'm talking mana whenua at the end of the day. Whakaminia, 1834, native surname only, chiefs, okay? No fungis, no bodgy surnames, because I'll check them out. Oh no, you can't do your name Pohepa, Epiha, because that name doesn't appear on the register in Britain. Okay, so that's out. The Manahi Parapara Mohini is a very old name. The Parapara name goes with the Manukau name right through this country. Chatham Islands, the Manukau and the Parapara, South Island, um, up north in... in um, Golden Bay, you have Manukau and Parapa up north, the Kaipras, up right up north, you've got the Parapara with the Manukau again in Paihia and over the other side in Bay of Islands. I've got all the titles here for that. Rafati, all those places, Dargaville, Poti, Helensville, Auckland, Kuponga, Kuya, Kunwas, all those places, it's all got the Parapara and the Manukau name, all over the titles. Then you go down to Manukau, down Shannon, and the Manukau, down the South Island. Okay, Motueka, all those places, Manukau all over the place, you've got to. That's why I went and did a big research down there on the seaweed ex exploration, and went and I picked up a lot down there same time on the Marae. Okay, I had meetings on Marae. So that's all I wanted to say today, apart from trying to get hold of my crew. I think they've got uh, phone shy with me because I put it on camera. I put it there because it puts their name right in bright lights in front of the whole world watching me talk to them as being their word against your word. Videos are better than documents in courts because it's you in person, the live flesh and blood, making statements like what I'm making now. That the Moai Crown is God's law, L O R E, standing in London as superior to the Queen's title, to the Vatican, it's superior because they're using our mana with our memorials and the Nubian Africans memorial obelisks God said build here in Africa not in Rome not in France not in London not in New York not in Washington DC the white man puts them there they, they lifted it up took it somebody's property and stuck it on another land with this trend in title the Admiralty Martial Law means they make war then move in then clear everybody off the land and put their own law on top of the land and everybody's got to buy it off them as being seized of title back to the King of England. Silent King no more. When you go into a court you check, it's got King's Bench Court, Silent Partner, Queen's Bench Court, the racket and the corruption and fraud of Rothschild Banks, the Pope and his Vatican City corporate business using this law, we're going to sting them with the pound note. They all get the 970 million trillion trillion pound note, the green one. That's spread right over the elite families, 300 families, royal families, the Queen, Elizabeth, Queen Victoria family, over the church and state, over the federal state, owned by the Queen, over all the corporate companies, private companies, personal personal assets, business, you get the bill because you've corrupted and abused our law. This Clinton 1830 title. Okay, the first piece of land that was sold to a Maori chief, or well, not a Maori chief then, they call him Maori chief now, but that was an indigenous native. They call them Aborigines in Australia, but an indigenous native and I'm putting the Moai name right on top because that's who they are. The Tahitians are Moai, origin 
blood DNA. And then you can't get away from that. And I just put some, um, some of, of the pictures I put together myself, drew them all up with Moai, connection to us here. And Helen Clark and, and the president of Chile put a, a statue of Moai on the beach in Island Bay, Wellington, and on the plaque, it, they put, they wrote, Moai looks like Maori. You see, it didn't say Moai are Maori, because there's no such thing as Maori. I'm making this statement quite clear. You're either a Maori, iwi, or you are Maui hapu. One or the other. So now we're just separating who's who, then drop the power note on their head. That's why I warned these people calling themselves Whakaminia, uh, Danny Watson, this one for you, on ZB Radio, saying you don't like what I'm saying. I'm saying this on this video so that your big ear can hear what I'm saying, that you're one or the other. You're not going to mix up these Littlewood Treaty that you own James Busby and the 1835 Declaration of Independence Plan has got no money. The government in Wellington, your government, legislated it out. So that's the end of you. You have to go through all the trouble to try and legislate it back in. Too bad, because we can stop you with this one. Right? The W. Tucker paper, not the Littlewood paper, the watermark paper, official documents that are written on. Your Littlewood documents, authenticated document, self, blank document with the watermark in it, is inferior to this superior W. Tucker Clendon title written documents. He wrote the treaty with Busby and someone altered it. That's who I want to find. You're going to get another power note on your head those ones that altered it, altered with the Littlewood Treaty, altered this Clendon W. Tucker original 1830-1836 document. Okay, the first pieces of land sold here legally from Britain is this captain of the ship title. You got that in your thick heads? You lot up there? I'm talking to you in this camera so that the whole world can hear what I'm saying because this affects all indigenous countries in the world, including Standing Rock. This is your title. Hear me? This is your title. Once we take this country, yours is next on the list because I'm seeing a lot of what's happened in America in front of my eyes that no one will get near this. No one, will, no one can inquire into a private contract. This is a private contract between the chiefs who are following Moa and God, truth, law, and the British government, Navy. Okay? So the Treaty of Waitangi is a different set of rules from New South Wales, Australia. In, in other words, it's a Queen's Bench title that's second hand. It's not a real admiral. It's a vice admiral which is borrowed from here. It's borrowed from here. So someone altered Captain Clendon, ready Clendon, treaty agreement. You see, he wrote it with Busby. He wrote it because he was legal and he knew what he was doing with Admiralty has been shipping, sealing and whaling. Right? He knew how to use the King's shipping documents. Okay? Bill of Laden and trading. You, know, you had to you had to have business mind like that. He was a businessman. He was very rich at the time. And um, Russell, uh, Moira Russell Hoffman, she's a friend of mine in Rotorua, Russell, she's one of the residents there that are backing what I'm saying as resident there. She can speak as a resident that's come under these titles straight from Britain. Okay? 
you've got two sets of British. The ones in Australia that are mixed up with the convicts that came over and started selling land from Australia, like these other ones, that were so selling, selling the land without authority or sovereignty, straight from Britain, given by Britain, they were selling all the land. That's why the Monaco land title seized the whole lot back into the Auckland title, okay, before it went to Wellington after that. So those are the titles I'm holding here for all the indigenous countries of the world, waiting for these Maoris to wake up. It is not worth talking to Maori because they are made up as well. That's not real tribe. It's not a real tribe. It belongs to these Pākehās, these thugs from Australia, these pirates. This flag we have that was put together with King William was for pirates. So we're building the pirates. Anybody that falls on Bill English side is a pirate. Now they've got um, over um, a half a billion. No, they've got 61 billion. Death. Over, uh, owe it now. Right? It's, it's 50 billion before. Now it's 61 billion in New Zealand alone. America's more on top of that. They're going to get the bill too for those American people who join us with this title, Clendon title, is the most important document, the W. Tucker copyright, watermark, authenticated, blank document with his writing on it. Right? It had his writing on it. And it's supposed to have his writing on the Treaty of Waitangi. It's supposed to have Clendon's handwriting on that document. They're using the Littlewood Treaty. No, -uh. no, no. It's invalid. It's not right. It's a fraud. And the treaty itself is a fraud because it's got no end date. It's got no end date. It doesn't matter for us because we are the sovereign and we are the contractors, the main contractors. They're third party to us. These people, John Key, is stuck with the bill because he's the one that was caught with it the last. With the Panama Papers, he's he's going down with the cabal and all the banking and all the real estate companies, Bailey's, he's going to get the bill, Buff, Buff and Thompson, they all get the bill from Cook Street. You're going to get the bill. I warned you, I warned you what's coming up because I knew I held the titles all along for Mohi Manukau. It's a pity he died and all the rest of them died and I'm holding on to their documents. I'm holding on to their legal documents that says I was here. I saw you coming on the ship. Okay? That's how it works. That's what Mohi says. I was here. I didn't have a waka. I just saw your wakas coming in. Okay? That's, that's how he says it. Yeah, I was in the tree, kahuka tree, watching you while any wakas coming in. He didn't need waka. He was spirit. Okay? That's the Moriori and the Maori. So, there you go. I just wanted to let you know uh, that um, I'll just read this a little bit. Alternatively, alternatively, if the final English drafting conference had of being held over at James Busby's office residence at Pahia Waitangi, then the paper would have been born a J&J &J town Turkey mill 1838 watermark consistent with Busby's stock in use at the time. You see, the stock used was W. Tucker 1833 from the home of James Reddy Clendon. He did all the documents in his home at Okiato farm block. Okay, 220 acre farm block. He, he, he took from 1830. <coughs> 1833, just before the flag was raised on 1834, is the flag of New Zealand, then the Whakaminina flag, the Whakaputanga flag, the flag that I've been flying all the time. And that's the same flag that was later gazetted in Australia as a 1835 Declaration of Independence flag. It was already a war flag right from when the British resident stepped on the land. And, and proclaimed the land belonged to the king of England. 
Okay, he had to do that when he got off the land, uh, off the boat, the ship, the fortitude. Okay, so that's just something uh, I wanted to tell you. Um, I, I'm going to read this. I'm going to read this bit out to you. It's it's www.treatyofwaitangi.net.nz Clendon Bar Clendon Dispatch Dispatches. This is this his dispatches. It says. The W. Tucker 1833 watermark founded upon the Littlewood Treaty document. If the final draft, English draft of the treaty had of being completed aboard HMS Herald, then Hobson, Hobson's or Freeman's onboard paper stocks would have been used if Hobson had dipped into his personal stock. Then the final draft would have been written on James Simmons 1838 watermark paper. Had Freeman supplied the sheet from his secretarial stock, then it would have been Dudney and Co. 1838 watermark paper. Alternatively, if the final English drafting conference had been held over at James Busby's official residence at Paihia Waitangi, then the paper would have borne a J and J Town Turney Turkey J and J Town Turkey Mill 1838 watermark, consistent with Busby's stock in use at the time. The stock used was W. Tucker 1833 from the home of James Reddy Clendon. There, that's the evidence that James Clendon wrote out the treaty. He wrote out the treaty because he had the authority as a ship's captain of the Navy to draft on behalf of the king, straight on behalf of the king straight that's what i'm doing on behalf of the king straight i'm talking for the king that's what he's saying i'm talking for the king so am i talk for the king as a native right the native for the native lands or all, all over the world okay you got that beyond the drafting stage clinton's presence at the final drafting stage of the english wording for the treaty of whitening becomes very important in view in the view of events of the 20th of february 1840 and the 3rd of April 1840, when duplicate copies of Busby's final draft, Busby's final draft, in brackets, the Littlewood Treaty, were written up for dispatch for the government of the United States. Right? The Littlewood Treaty was set up for the United States. By that time, a political event of great importance had occurred regionally, which would, over time, have major repercussions to the American whaling industry. The treaty had been signed amongst northern chiefs at Waitangi and Hokianga. Britain had commenced a process of annexing New Zealand as a colony and territories within New Zealand were systematically being ceded in sovereignty to Queen Victoria. It was James Reddy. See, we were already under King William before he wasn't dead yet. This was getting prepared. For Queen Victoria way before King William died in 1837. That's when she took over, his niece. It was James Reddy Clendon's duty as US Consul to inform his superiors in Washington DC. Those are his superiors, you see, look, owned by the Queen, or the King at the time, DC, about the colonization incentive underway as well as the terms and conditions being entered into between the British Crown and the Sovereign Chiefs. You see, it was underway. You see what he said? About the colonisation incentive underway. It was already in play. They had already made transactions on land with Poma, this captain. All the evidence shows that on the 4th of February 1840, James Reddy Clinton knew the final draft English wording of the treaty up to that point of development when he last saw it undoubtedly on his own premises where it had been written on his paper with a subtle changes additions or deletions had occurred to it after that time he could not know but it's very apparent that on the 4th of February 1840 he transcribed a copy of the wording he'd helped to create before it was taken away to Reverend Henry Williams for translation. 
as consul to the United States of America, Clinton would need a copy for dispatch if Captain Hobson were ultimately successful in securing a treaty. You see, he had already set it up with America before this country had its treaty. He had already legalized it with America, straight to England through America. There. Not straight to Britain, straight to America, because America is run by King William IV. In commerce, in commerce, right? Under his commercial acts, 1830-1837, that I'm using on our contracts. Right? We have the right to use it because we haven't snapped off our sovereignty to him. We're still in a contract with him, even though he's dead. It's his successor, Captain, his successor, uh, King Ernest Augustus V. Not the Queen, is not his successor as such in this Admiralty. The straight Admiralty, not the Vice Admiral of the Queen, the Admiralty. You see, they had forged the Queen to take over from King William IV, it's supposed to be King Ernest Augustus, okay? If the government of US should hold this in contemplation, securing an American treaty with the chiefs, see, securing an American treaty with the chiefs, I should advise that a private agent of talent be seated out here to effect the object and that it be done with the assistance of our consul here, Clinton, who seems well disposed to forward the interests of our whalers. But being a British subject, he might be induced to prevent a very full arrangement and possibly might be the means of defeating the object if he was made the only agent to act. Already large offers had been made to him to take office, which he has declined, preferring his present situation to accepting anything connected to the government here. See papers of Charles Wilkes, 1837 to 1847, page 166, dispatch number 64, Auckland University of Auckland Library. James Reedy Clinton's role in helping to secure a treaty between Queen Victoria and the native chiefs, chiefs is largely glossed over in New Zealand historic circles. Glossed over. Clinton was a close confederate and friend of James Busby and was, and was of constant assistance to the British resident in establishing law and order in New Zealand from 1833. See? 1833 was when he stuck the flag together for 1834, the Navy. Okay? Until 1840, along with the Reverend Henry Williams and George Clark. Clendon was a member of Busby's immediate support group and each of these gentlemen were contributors or co-signatories to both the 1835 Declaration of Independence instigated by Busby or the Treaty of Waitangi in 1840. He only did that because of a government, that's all, of Mr. Clendon's influence in convincing the chiefs to sign the Treaty of Waitangi document, Commodore Wilkie's recorded in his journal. About 40 chiefs, principally minor ones, a very small representation of the proprietors of the soil, were indeed not the owners of the soil, not the natives of the soil, the proprietors of the soil, right, were induced to sign the treaty, induced, right, made to sign it. The influence of Mr. Clendon arising from his position as the representative of the United States was amongst the most efficient means by which the assent of even this small party was obtained. The natives placed much confidence in him believing him to be disinterested. He became a witness to the document and informed me when speaking of the transaction that it was in transaction that worked, that it was entirely through his influence that the treaty was signed. Treaty of Waitangi by T. I. Buick. The Littlewood Treaty document, which is positively dated on the 4th of February, 1840, 
and identified to be in the handwriting of James Busby by New Zealand leading handwriting expert Dr. Phil Parkinson is also written on W. Tucker 1833 paper. The only individual in New Zealand known to use this unique brand of paper between 1839 and 1842 was James Reddy Clendon. Reverend Henry Williams stated in his memoirs that he was handed the final draft for translation into Maori language at 4 p.m. on the 4th of February 1840. There is no English rough draft preceding creation of the Maori Te Tiriti o Waitangi, which more closely mirrors the Maori text word for word than Busby's final draft dated on the 4th of February 1840, the Littlewood Treaty. The Littlewood Treaty is an American treaty, right? And it certainly looks like Clinton didn't want to go ahead with it. The 12 pages of surviving rough draft notes in English don't even come close. Okay, there you go. That's uh, what I wanted to uh, uh, tell you. The rest is going on to the Confederation, but I'm very confident that we'll have an outcome from this Waitangi Day, 6th of February, 1860 February, 6th of February, 2017, with a settlement of the New Zealand government's Crown account, Treasury, and with ancient Treasury in Britain, under this title, under this title of King William, the fourth surrogate, Captain James Reddy Clinton and myself as surrogate, I'm writing up the documents similar to what he wrote. With all the documents on the mypowerhouse.com website, you'll see the um, dual government of Maui Crown in script. You'll see it there of an identical picture of New Zealand as a government of itself. Right for the world. The dual Maui Crown British Westminster government dual creditors of these crown notes. Okay? The idea is to use the levy debtors as collateral and land confiscated, seized back with this title as the president proof of claim, instrument, legal instrument, and authenticated seals of King William IV and Maui Crown. Okay, so that's all I want to say. And um, the phone hasn't rang yet, so I'll try and ring King Kaurua, our chief, and see if I can get him. Time now, 12.12, 12, 12 minutes past 12. I'll try and get him, but not necessarily because I didn't want to alarm him. Get on, mate. Get on, mate. How's that, mate? Are you working, are you? Yeah. Oh, okay. No, just, just a hello, that's all. See if, oh, you, yeah. see if yeah. you're still alive like how me. You, how are you? How are you? How are you? I'm all right. Good. I'm good. You're still keeping your body up to the scratch? Yeah, not, not, not all the time, but sometimes. You got, you got, you got uh, muscles on your eyebrows? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, yeah. no. On no. your I'm, I'm my arms. The lips are, are, are right that size. <laughs> 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 Only the gaps between with the teeth. <laughs> I need some concrete in the middle of it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're funny, man. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta keep my humor. I gotta, I gotta keep my humor going, my little cane. You keep your humor going, yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah? No. Oh, okay. No. Oh, are you? Oh, that sounds good. Sounds good. Keep, keep, keep the faith, mate. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Keep, keep the faith, and you'll be right. We'll, we'll be right. I'm working on our things. I'm working on our things. It, it looks good. And yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, I just, I just got this Clinton thing out now. It's just plain as day now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's plain as day. But, but you'll understand. Your, your name, your name is all over the world now. They all know who, who the chief is. There's only one chief, or, and that's it. <laughs> the other ones are mischiefs. <laughs> I think, I, I think they're gonna, huh? No, I'm not bothered about them. I'm not bothered about them. We're, we're, we're full steam ahead, mate. Uh, 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 I'll, I'll tell you one day, one day before, well before then. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll have a little we'll, one. We'll get together. We'll yeah, get together. yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll yeah. Okay. It's all good. Okay. okay. okay See you okay. now. Bye. See you, mate. Bye. Yeah, that's how you talk to your chiefs. You talk to chiefs straight and they answer the phone. See? You answer the phone. That's all I had to worry about is him. He's the one with his name on uh, documents with the seal in Britain. That makes all the difference in the world. It's his word. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter how many Maoris are there, because the Maoris are a product of an invention of who put it together. See, I'm putting this together. I'm the author of what I say and put it out there to see who's noticed this anything truthful in it. Okay? And so the government here just keeps screwing people and making them believe that they're the right people when it's clear as day, light, that these documents I read have the answers in them. They publish it in such a way as to cover it over, like I would see, glossed over. Okay? That word glossed over, like it looks like Māori, or sounds like Maori. Don't, it doesn't say it is Maori. It doesn't say Tahitians are Maori, because it would put the Maori out. You ask yourself, where did Maori come from? They'll say, oh, in the middle of the ocean, somewhere up in Hawaii, or sometimes down in Tahiti, or across in Australia. They won't pin it down to anything, because they can't. Their ancestors did it like that, to run commerce. All these things are commercial. That's why I said, Kingy, forget about everything else. In today's world, tikanga has its values. Its values is not financial. Its values are personal and cultural. And the government parks it all up and puts it in archives, stacks it up like that and says, well, there you are there, that's your tikanga. You can't make money out of that unless you pay people, pay to go and look at it. And people want to go and play with mobile phones. They want to look at this because there's things to do on it. Right? So you use this on there, on the documents, with the videos on there better than documents. You see? So I'll just say once more that we are going ahead for the whole world, not just here in New Zealand. I'm doing this for a good reason. I'm talking on behalf of all the indigenous countries in the world who are affected by the same crown beast. Cabal, Illuminati, and call it what you like. There's other names they have for it. Bilderbergs and IMF, NATO, UN. Church of State, Jesuits, Lizards, all those sort of names are all around commerce in some way making money out of gold, out of natural resources and they'll use their documents. They don't like documents that got capitals on it so I used 
the video, they can't change the video because it's you in the raw. And they don't like social media because 